Today we're going to talk about the fastest way to build muscle according to the latest science and research. To do this, we're going to look at a position paper released in 2021 by a group of leading hypertrophy researchers. They provide evidence-based guidelines that help us to design our programs. Two people that you may be aware of that were involved in this paper are Brad Schoenfield and Eric Helms. Let's take a look and see how we should be designing our programs. First, we're going to look at training frequency. How many days of the week do you have available to train? Training frequency and volume are very closely related. They found that increased training frequency does not build more muscle unless it increases overall training volume. Most studies look at volume as the number of sets done, and in those terms, we need to be doing at least 10 sets per muscle group per week as a minimum. The upper end is less clear, with some studies showing 20 sets as a peak and others showing good results above this. Because of this, the experts don't make an upper end recommendation, but from my standpoint, 20 sets makes sense as long as you can recover from this level of volume. We only have so much time to work out, so one of the ways we can manage volume is to prioritize our volume on our slower growing muscle groups and use less volume on the groups that are responding well to training. They suggest periodizing volume, starting at the lower end and slowly building up to a peak with a brief overreaching phase where you push yourself just beyond what you can fully recover from. Then take a break with active recovery to allow for super compensation, giving you an increased level of muscle size. To tie this back to frequency, they recommend limiting per session training to 10 sets for a muscle. Any greater volume should be done on a different day. If there's anything in this video you'd like me to go over in greater detail, let me know in the comments and I'll make it happen. We'll talk about load next, because if you're not using a heavy enough weight and training close to failure, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how much volume you do, you're not going to build muscle. Load is often defined as a percentage of one rep max or specific rep goal like a 10 rep max. Muscle can be built with a wide variety of loads and rep ranges, which is good news for us home workout guys who may not have super heavy weights to train with. The researchers state it's advantageous to train with various loads and repetitions. Still, from a practical standpoint, it makes sense to spend the most time in the moderate range between 6 to 12 reps, as it's more time efficient than high rep training and easier on the body than working with heavy low repetitions. For how close to failure we should train, the researchers call this set end point. And the more experienced a lifter you are, the more critical it is to train close to failure, even bringing some sets to muscular failure, for example, on the last set of an exercise. For exercise selection, much of it is in agreement with the video I recently did on how many different exercises we should do per muscle group. A couple of notable things they mention is while we should vary our exercises, we should keep the ones with more complex movement patterns like squat, bench, and bent over rows constant in our programs and swap out less complex exercises like single joint and isolation movements to provide variety. They also recommend working the muscle using exercises that put them in the stretch position. Some examples of these are overhead tricep extensions and incline curls. I was taught to include exercises that hit the muscle in both the stretched and contracted position, but these researchers are clearly putting more emphasis on stretched position training. They also highlight the importance of combining exercises in such a way to target the muscle from a variety of different angles to achieve complete development, not just randomly throwing together a bunch of exercises. Right now I don't have a lot of time to train, so I was particularly interested in the following sections. For rest between sets, I've shortened mine to a minute, and with the occlusion training I've been doing, the rests are as low as 30 seconds. This goes against their recommendation of at least 2 minutes rest for compound exercises and 60 to 90 seconds on isolation movements. They did mention a couple of studies that show we can adapt to lower rest times and have comparable muscle growth to those who take longer rests. Another thing I'm doing more of is supersets, partial repetitions, and to a lesser extent, drop sets and rest pauses. The researchers refer to these as advanced training methods. While these techniques didn't bring about better results than traditional training, they present a more time-efficient approach to increasing muscle hypertrophy and build the same amount of muscle in less time per training session as long as overall volume is the same. To see how to incorporate these principles and progress them in a four-day training split to build the maximum amount of muscle in the least time, watch this video next so you can keep working out while having fun. This is Lawrence from Fit and 50. We'll talk to you again in the next one.